If you don't mind trespassing, then we don't. <laughs> now I'm good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't remember the first time that mm. I saw someone say that. I feel like I probably saw it in conjunction with someone saying like another person said it was perfect, yeah. you know? You know, I think when I heard the word perfect, I didn't feel like the people who said it meant like perfect, perfect. Like mm. there's absolutely nothing that, you know, could possibly be improved or changed. But, you know, I took it to mean that they felt like it got pretty close. With Spelunky, it's a little different because you had like the 2008 release and then the XBLA release is now 10 years old. But like, right. I guess now that a decade plus is gone, is that weird to you? I mean, now that you mentioned it, yeah, because I hadn't thought of it. I didn't it mean like to that. make it weird. <laughs> no, it's cool. I mean, I, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about all that time, mm -hmm. you know, um, except for every now and then yeah. when it comes up like this. And when it does, I, I think back on it and, you know, I'm just, I don't know, really grateful that I had the opportunity. And a lot has changed, right? You know, I was in such a different place when. I released the freeware version of Spelunky, and mm. then I was in another different place when we released Spelunky on Xbox, and then Spelunky 2 is also completely different. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why I like making and releasing games is it kind of ends up being this time capsule for the different stages in my life, and you know I can kind of see my progress as time goes on. Indie games back then just wasn't like a thing, mm. right? And so it was very exciting, it kind of helped. It felt like we were helping to sort of direct this new thing and it could go in any direction at that point. By the time I worked on the uh, Xbox version, you know, I think it was starting to become more of a mature scene, indie games, and uh, you know, the fact that we were getting like deals with Microsoft mm. and Sony and Nintendo and things like that, it was like, whoa, you know, I'm, this, is, this is very new, this is a whole nother world. When Microsoft got involved, were you like, that's cool, y'all are a big company, but like no one plays indie games? Or were you like, oh shit, this is what's gonna be like, the levy's gonna break on this whole scene? You know, with Spelunky and Xbox, I mean, by that point, there had already been like a lot of success. Yeah, I, I shouldn't say nobody played indie XBLA. games. XBLA, yeah. you know, it was the beginning. It yeah. was the beginning of it, right? And um, so, you know, I, I saw like friends of mine, like Edmund, for example, having success with Super Meat Boy mm. on, on Xbox, um, which was, you know, I think one of the reasons why Xbox was like an exciting platform at that mm. time is that there were like some big hits on there, like Castle Crashers also. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, that was definitely in the back of my mind, like this could be big, but sure. I always try to keep my expectations like fairly grounded. When you're releasing a game, it's like, that's just a smart thing to mm -hmm. do. How many people have played Spelunky? Do you like have access to that? I mean, like total the series? Yeah. Jeez, I mean, if you include the freeware version, it's, sure. it's gotta be in the millions, That's... but I don't know exactly what, I'm just, I'm not a huge like data person. Yeah. Um, my wife is now helping me with, uh, just with like the business side of things and mm. she's much more, whoa, look at that. <laughs> it's a big old bumblebee. Um, and uh, so, you know, I have a better sense of the numbers these days, but yeah. like the freeware version, yeah, never slapped any kind of counter on that or anything like that, so I have no idea. Is that just a number to you on a screen? Or do you like try to wrap your mind around a million people? For me, it is, I think a lot of 
indie developers are very analytical and very data driven, but I've just never been like that. Um, you know, I think part of it is that I came to game development as just a, a doodler, basically, like with drawing. And so, I don't know, I, I kind of treat game development like like drawing in a lot of ways mm -hmm. where, you know, I'm. it's just kind of like what I feel like like doing, you know, that's the direction that the game goes. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think in some sense, yeah, the number of people who play the game is just a number. And so, yeah, you know, a million, multiple millions is like, for me, it's like a huge number and that's enough, you know? It yeah. Just, yeah. It feels really as, awesome and kind of mind blowing for sure. As like the creator, what do you think like, what attracts that many people to Spelunky? Wow, I mean, I think when it came out, it was a new thing, you know? I think that mixture of roguelike stuff and platforming, I mean, really, I feel like it's just the roguelike philosophy, but Spelunky really made it accessible mm. to a lot of people. Stress burps. No, they're uh, they're just choking on water burps. <laughs> it's it's the things like drinking water that end up getting you in the end. <laughs> Stuff you don't expect. Okay. Alrighty. I'm going up. Wow, this really is like some actual spelunking here. Whoa, big old crack right here. Oh. Ooh. You okay? Yeah, I just took a rock to the back. Oh. That's oh. all good, it wasn't bad. Oh yeah. It was just that right there. Yeah. Um, there. How are you Pick gonna get up? that tri tripod up? Well, let me stop filming. Hopefully our boss bosses see Whoa. this and our new thing will be like putting game devs in life threatening situations. Yeah, this is like the new game dev fear factor yeah. or something like no, that. Uh, Hello Games is really in for it. We're gonna have to send those those dudes to space. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's so weird cave pigeons. Oh my gosh. I'm going against everything I've seen in horror movies and going ahead. Yeah, don't fall down a hole. Good advice. I didn't even think to look down. Yeah, as look, as as look I got. down. Oh, when you mentioned that there's a big drop over there. I had emailed you like our specific angle mm -hmm. and that was the word perfect we Alex and me were talking about because I've seen it used to describe Spelunky. Yeah. But I don't know like if I've missed this, I'm sorry, but like I don't know if I've ever seen you reflect on the idea of a perfect game. First off, do you remember the first time you saw someone be like, it's perfect? I don't remember the first time that mm. I saw someone say that. I feel like I probably saw it in conjunction with someone saying like, 
another person said it was perfect, yeah. you know? I don't know where that term came from as far as Spelunky is concerned. Mm -hmm. I feel like it took a while, because mm -hmm. I definitely don't remember people saying that about the freeware game. And I don't feel like people said that even like right when the Xbox game came out. I think it was a term that took time for people to apply to Spelunky. Mm -hmm. But when I heard it, I was, you know, obviously like very flattered sure. to hear that. But, you know, to me, it's also like a dangerous word. Mm -hmm. um, I think in making art, making games, and just in my everyday life, I try to, there are some pigeons behind me in this cave. Did it just like come out of that crack? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I guess that's a good segue to me saying that I think it's important to just kind of embrace imperfection and the chaos of life. Yeah. And I certainly didn't feel like Spelunky was a perfect game myself. Yeah. Um, I think it felt like the very best that we were able to do at the mm -hmm. time, but I could certainly see, especially by the release of Spelunky on Xbox, that we learned so much that I definitely felt like I could do better, that sure. we could all you know, do better, but we were proud of what we did also. With Spelunky 1, that people had no expectations. With Spelunky 2, people are gonna have a lot of expectations. <laughs> going into it, right? Mm. And so inevitably you're going to disappoint people. Yeah. Um, but I felt that if, if people thought that Spelunky 1 was a perfect game, you know, they can keep playing that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you all good? Yeah. Good. It's just like. <laughs> so it's kind of amazing. Yeah. And so I was driven more by just, yeah, what I wanted to, to build on and I felt yeah. safe. With Spelunky 1 kind of feeling like, you know, we just did a bunch of climbing to get in here. Spelunky 1 feeling like a very secure rock mm -hmm. to stand on to then work on Spelunky 2. Do you kind of look back at the development of Spelunky 1 as like, that was a pure time or a more innocent time. You know what I'm saying? Like, is there that kind of rose tint or nostalgia to it? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't feel like, well, let's just put it this way. I'm, I do look back on it very fondly. I don't want to be back at that point though, because <laughs> it was a point in my life where it, I could focus just on making this one game and it was simple in that sense, but I also just felt much less secure as, as an artist and, um, you know, just in terms of my career and, and where I was going. And it just, it felt very, um, it just felt a lot less stable to me at that time. A lot of indie developers, especially when they're starting out, I think it's easy to think about the game you're working on as like, this is it, you know, mm. this has got to kind of, make or break me, this has got to be my magnum opus. Um, so, I, you know, I think it's important to realize that it's fine. And I think that that's a big part of uh, not like succumbing to perfection is just thinking about things this way. Like, you know, after, after release, I always notice things in my games where mm. I'm like, oh man, how did that get out there like <laughs> that a little bit? At the end of Spelunky 1, for sure, like toward the end of development, there was art where I was just kind of like scrambling to, to try to make it look good. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't have a lot of time and, you know, I would like mess up and I would lose like the high resolution version of a file or something like mm -hmm. that. And one thing I noticed is that like, it's that first mistake I noticed that feels the worst because up until, that first mistake, it does kind of feel like you did something perfect. And when there's like one mistake, it kind of feels like this perfect thing with like this one blemish on it. And that feels really bad. Mm. But then inevitably, like I'll find something else that is a little awkward mm. and then something else. And then you just realize that 
it's nothing is perfect and you start to actually appreciate some of these quote unquote flaws is actually the the human touch right like mm. that's that's like my personality coming through and it ends up just making the the work i think feel more rich in the end sure and i really just try to embrace that this is Definitely, I'd say up there as far as surreal experiences go. Oh, yeah.